So a private award, this is uh, Matthew Heineman's uh, first narrative feature. He's done a, a couple great documentaries, Cartel Land and City of Ghosts. So uh, what drew you to the project? Was that part of the appeal, him doing this first narrative film? Uh, it had nothing to do with it. I like the subject matter quite a bit. I, mm -hmm. think I have a lot of respect for Marie Colvin uh, and for any journalist who actually goes into a war situation. Uh, so for me, that was primarily what drew me to it. Matt also because he's remarkable in terms of his dedication and his love and passion for his work. How familiar were you with Marie's story? I was uh, vaguely aware of her. I mean, I knew her work somewhat. I, didn't, I hadn't read all of her work, and then I just became more and more familiar, as I, obviously, as I prepped. Mm -hmm. So what was it like working with Matthews? Because he, he DP'd his documentaries. Yeah, he right? does. Yeah. And he's very, but he did release... I, I think there was a, the beginning of the journey was a little more complicated. The beginning of the first few days was like, hmm, wasn't 100% sure he wanted Richardson to be operating his camera. And then finally went, all right, do it. What, what, you do did it, did something happen? Did you no, talk no, no, to no, them? Or? No, no, I, <laughs> it would, like, we'd have conversations and say, you know, look, work with the actors. Don't worry. I, you tell me what you want to do with the camera, I'll do it. And But you just... Focus, focus in on. Did, did he, like, and that, that was it? He didn't come back at all? Yeah. No, that was it. Here you go. He would operate sometimes, like, we, we were doing some war material, and we had minis, Alexa minis, and uh, some old super speeds, and uh, you know, everything was handheld but virtually in the movie, or mm -hmm. certainly 75, 80%. And once in a while, he would take, take on the camera. Mm -hmm. I'd try to put him in the most dangerous spot. <laughs> And uh, I was successful. He's been in a lot of dangerous spots already. Yeah, he didn't so. seem to care. He would hop right up next to the machine gun and would be like pelted with, you know, it's like, okay, good. I'm really glad you like this. Because in Jordan, you don't, there's not a lot of what you have in L.A. You don't, there's not a lot of protection. Mm -hmm. um, the film is shot. There's a, a very, like, documentarian vibe to it. Was that something you guys discussed? Yeah, yeah. to be as honest as possible. Mm -hmm. Cinema Verity, I would yeah. say, is closest. Mm -hmm. I, I tried as hard as possible to be as natural as possible, not to light where I didn't have to light. Uh, I tried to do everything in a natural way. Did uh, the, how much artificial light do you use? I'm assuming for like the CNN sequences and like well, like the CNN, that. well, like uh, the sequences where you had the dream sequence. You know, those I do. I'd use a very natural form of light, and as often as possible, I'd use window light mm -hmm. uh, for her sequences. But the yeah, it's not very often. I tried very. I mean, I had a couple of HMIs. Mm -hmm. So I had sodium vapors, and I put sodium vapors up and try to use things that would felt more natural to the uh, the environment. Mm -hmm. um, I really like uh, the way you shot uh, her from behind, like whenever she was like going. That's into... a woman you want to shoot from behind yeah. sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I feel like because really. um, she's those... so statuesque. But it's, it's so also powerful. true to documentaries. Yeah, like, because you have to follow. Yeah, and I feel like in a lot of films, like if there's like a chase scene or, yeah, you yeah. know, like if there's a cop, like there's always shots from the front. No, them. exactly. I mean, I didn't mean that in another way. I meant in the sense that when you're following a journalist, you're following from behind. Yeah. You don't, you don't lead a journalist. They're mm -hmm. going to lead you. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely an intention. Obviously. So what was it like shooting um, those sequences when she's just like leading into a gunfight and like cramped spaces and like... It was, I'd come off the film previously called The Drift, and I was stuck in a boat forever. So <laughs> this, this was actually quite, quite a vacation. In Jordan. <laughs> well, what was the most challenging part of shooting in Jordan? Light. Mm -hmm. I didn't have Rob Legato on my back sleeve. You, know, you couldn't control the sun. <laughs> I, I couldn't control the sun, yeah. I had to give in to the hard light. Mm -hmm. um, the... The war zone sequences were, some of them were really devastating. Um, there's like a scene of them digging up um, bones, and then there's one with uh, uh, this boy uh, dying when they carry him in. Um, and Which they, is a CNN report you were yeah, talking about, yeah. Yeah, and then there's um, like those interviews with uh, the, the widows. Mm -hmm. and, like, the, how did you uh, shoot those sequences? Because they were very intense. They were very, uh, they were almost improvised. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we went to certain people we knew, and then I would just put the camera on my shoulder and just start shooting. And he would sit beside uh, Marie and help guide her towards a particular subject matter with the children, particularly that one woman who had the tear in her eye. I mean, all of them had, 
all the people he chose had gone through something similar to this in their experiences. So they were, they were, real they were drawing from, yeah. yeah, they were drawing from real experiences. Same thing with the uh, finding the body parts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that were in the mass grave. A lot of those women had lost husbands, children. So it was an extraordinarily real experience for all of us. And Jamie Dornan was superb, by the way. Mm. You haven't mentioned him, but I love, love his work. Mm. I hope you all get a chance to see it. It's worth it. It's a really good movie. And it's Rosamund's really and great. And not many people want to, because it doesn't have that happy vibe. But I think it's certainly worthwhile doing. Um, same thing as I know that Caleb feels about his film. It's hard to get people to go to see films that aren't going to put a big smile on your face. And, uh, but we do need to support these films, because otherwise we're going to make a lot of junk. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, but shooting those uh, real refugees in particular, um, like, is it more difficult because they're not actors, or or do you, is is it just like the emotional toll of it because it, it's a real experience? It's the emotional pull, and yeah. in that particular scene, the mass grave, I kind of like left. We took while they were digging the hole, I just took a long lens and started doing pickoffs. I mm -hmm. think we did 100 or 150 pieces of people as they slowly came up to the hole to watch it. And we were able to capture very real moments. And Matt would go, oh, take a look. And then he'd go point to me in another spot, another spot. And that's what we sort of did to uh, collect the imagery that uh, has now ended up in that sequence. Um, so in terms of like setup shots, what was the most technically difficult one to pull off? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't. It went too fast. It was only 36, 37 days. I don't remember things being tremendously complex. It was mm -hmm. very, you know, it was like having a camera on my shoulder. I mm -hmm. lived with a camera on my shoulder. We, so the most complex thing is, of course, shooting war. I mean, this, the driving into the town, shutting off the lights of, of homes. Um, sometimes having to work in a media center where you only have one light bulb. And I would light off the real computers. I just went to 1600, sometimes to 2000, and just go wide open on, on the super speeds. Mm -hmm. And the computer would actually be illuminating. Mm -hmm. Can't do that with film. <laughs> Um, how how did you um, decide to shoot um, her death sequence? Because you don't it, there, there's an explosion, um, and you don't see her body until a, a little bit later. Like it's not the first shot, and then it's she's under a pile of debris. But it's still it, there's something kind of like triumphant about the way like it's set in in the frame. So how did you go about Th shooting that? That was that was very much Matt. Um, we had shot the death sequence. And then we had to get the, we did a crane to a drone transfer to what eventually became drone material from Syria. Um, and we were out of light. And then he said, I just need to get another close up of Jamie. And I said, okay, let's do it. And that was it. And that was it. <laughs> And he held on that shot of Jamie mm -hmm. for the longest period of yeah. time and let you feel. And then because it's all from his perspective. Yeah. yeah. And then you come back to her, and he didn't want to show blood. He didn't want to be gory. He didn't yeah. really want the information for an audience to see how she was killed. She, he just wanted to show the point that she was dead. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of like in in the scene where uh, in the beginning when she uh, loses her eye, that that was like all shot and I, but it was a, it's a beautiful shot because she's like hiding and like there's firefight going on and then she stands up and she says she's a journalist and it's in its explosion. So can you talk about that shot and how you pull that off? Yeah, sure. That was a, uh, that was the end of our day. We had a long sequence uh, in, with the Tamil Tigers. Uh, we ended up uh, hitting dusk on that, twilight actually, and there was one shot, steady cam, racing behind, uh, and we put cars and turned their headlights on and did an explosion. That was all we thought we were gonna get, and then I went in for the close-up work that you saw mm -hmm. with the uh, flashlights being the only illumination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's all dark, and then it's just you just see that source yeah. of light in there. Yeah. Um, well, you just uh, recently wrapped up uh, Quentin Tarantino's next movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, so what can you tell us about that? It's gonna be a fantastic <laughs> film, you're all gonna love it. <laughs> That's it. No, could you, I, can you can you could you could you uh, control the sun or no? Now it's Quentin. <laughs> but Quentin was more. He, he was he was of all the films we've done together. This was the first time he gave me a little bit more respect in terms of light. 
and you know, it was a measure of warmth. I think our relationship's getting warmer. And how did you pull that off? What happened? Was, I it think just he just like he's in age? love. Like, know, yeah. Love. He's yeah. in love. You know, he realized like, like, oh well, if it looks good, and they're still listening to my words, I think it's it's all working. Because originally he would go, all right, Bob, <laughs> if they're looking at your work, they're not listening to my words. <laughs> so it took me a number of films to get past that. This is the first time I got past it on about a half of it. There's a half that I didn't. I got, there were some, my crew was saying, you know, oh, Richardson, you've, you've gone downhill. <laughs> you've, you've allowed yourself to shoot all this frontal light. Yeah, well, it's all right. It's Quinn's movie. It's going to be a good movie. We're going to be proud of it no matter what. You, you got his respect. That's all that matters now. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all. That's a, that's a win. So. It's a win. Yeah. It's a win win situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Bob, thank you so much well, for joining pleasure. us. We'll see you back up here in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you.